All right, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, you've got a copy of your project. Mine is on my flash drive. Inside of that project folder, we've got the WW folder. And I need to put into that folder the work of pouch that we've started last time. So I've got my other folder here. I ended the pouch lesson on 411, so I'm going to copy that into the WW folder. Right there. Uh, pouch works because we've got jQuery, so jQuery's already been in our project for a while. But then what I need is the pouch.js file. So pouch.js, I'll copy that and put it into the WW folder. So what we need to do is integrate the code. Just because it's in here, it's not quite ready. The code in here, we're going to copy and paste it, the code in the file, into that file in a certain way. But first what we need to do is tell our index file, our main project, that now we have pouch capabilities. So let's edit the index file of the project. And at the very bottom where we've got a list of all of our dependencies, all of our JS files, that's where we've got load jQuery, load jQuery mobile, load Cordova, load custom code index.js. So before our custom code, new line 214 or so, we need to have a script tag that sources the pouch file. So that is, I'm just going to copy the Cordova line and then change it. This needs to point over to that pouch file, pouch dash whatever dot whatever dot js. And that is pouch dash six dot two dot dot one dot two dot min dot js. So we're saying load the basic jQuery library, load the jQuery mobile for nice, nice interfaces. Load the Cordova code so that we can access GPS, camera, all of the APIs of the device. Then load the pouch, our database, our database ability, and then the custom code. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then the code that was in our pouch working file, we're, we're going to start to take that code to put into this, into this project, because this index file is the one with all of our screens, our home screen, our classes screen, our PC screen. So this is, this is back, remember, when we, last, when we ended last month? This is our whole project for the MySDCE app. Well, I want to create a button to take us to a screen in the project so that we can have the database stuff, have the input fields and the div that shows results and all of that. In the, as just a very quick test here, in the home screen, I want to add a button down here, you know, save your classes, or create a class list, some sort of button on the home screen to then open up a new screen for the pouch input fields. So let's find our home screen. The area is at uh, line 40, 48. A while ago, we created a, a grid, two rows, two columns. We've got one of the row, the first row, the first co uh, the first row, the first column, and then the first row, the second column, block A, block B. Then the second row, first column, and the second row, second column. So in this spot where we left it, gave ourselves an empty spot. I'm going to create a button just like above here. I'm going to copy and paste the about button, paste it here, and change it so that this is the save your class button. So that about button. We need to change it so that it now goes over to some other new screen. Hashtag classes. Data roll button, data icon. We want a different kind of icon here. Maybe bullets or rows or something. I'm going to change a couple of other things. 
So pound classes. This will take us to a screen that's about our classes. Data icon bars. That creates these horizontal lines and icon of bars. I don't want the data icon pass no text. That's the one that removes the text and just leaves an icon. I don't want that. So completely remove that data icon pass attribute. Our transition, it's not going to be a pop-up screen. It's going to be a screen that takes up the whole interface. We need it. We need as much screen real estate as possible. If we do a pop-up, it cuts out edges that doesn't give us any that takes away space. So not a pop-up. We'll do slide up. The classes screen will slide up. And then uh, we we need um, To give this a name, we'll call it My Classes. So the actual text that appears on screen, My Classes. Because we're dealing with our fully formed project that has jQuery Mobile, we don't need that ID. Remember, we relied a lot about having ID equals BTN, whatever. We don't need that because now that we're back in jQuery Mobile, Having the href accomplishes all of that. But this gives us a button to take us to a new screen where we're going to have the pouch stuff. Let's go to the very end of the file and start to create that screen where we will show the, the pouch interface. So let's go all the way to the bottom. And looks like we've got ourselves that placeholder. The very bottom, we've got a placeholder sort of like template screen. That'd be good. Let's copy that section and paste it above it. I want the template as the very last item. We'll copy this section, which we then need to change to ID equals class. Change a couple of these things. And this is going to be a brand new screen to start to put the pouch input fields. So select section to section, and I'll paste that above, making a note, and pouch uh, class section. Now this footer note here, don't need that. Actually, we don't need the footer at all. I'm going to remove the footer from this new screen. That's just going to take up space that would be better served for actually showing the input and all of that. So no, no footer. Section, make sure you change that ID. That ID goes to class, or cl classes. We called it href equals classes. Don't need that comment. Data role header, data position fixed, that's good. And then our H1 will also make that say my classes. We've got the article. We don't need the footer. This uh, this screen doesn't have a, a nav bar. We don't want a nav bar. Again, that's going to take up more space. The nav bar that goes from the home screen to the PC screen to the computer screen. We don't need that. But we need a way to go back. Uh, once we get to this screen, we're stuck. We need to go back. Remember, we have the uh, jQuery mobile uh, element that will take us simply back one point in history. So inside of the header, inside of the header tag there, we need to add the, the back button. The final property after data position fixed, we've got data dash add dash btn or uh, yeah back dash btn. Beta add back, btn equals true. So we 
have an integrated patch yet, but we have a screen to do it at. Save it and run it in the browser. You know, Cordova Run Browser. Don't go to Run Chrome. Don't do that. Remember, you go back to your node, your command prompt, and you do Cordova Run Browser, or Cordova Run Device if you want, or Cordova Emulate Android. So let's just confirm at this point we've got the project with a new screen. I'm going to run it in the browser just because it's faster here. Cordova Run Browser. pause here just to make sure we've got everyone on the right track with a new screen where we will have the Cordova where we'll have the pouch integrated with Cordova A new button, my classes. I click on that, slides into view, my classes, back button. That's all we need so far. We're going to actually add the, the required Cordova files in our code in just a moment. We need that at the very least. We need it. Anyone need any help with that? Can you bring it down a little bit? Okay, so I ran this in the browser. I got a result. Uh, I have a brand new button on the home screen, and I click the button, and I get a screen that slides up, which is this this new classes screen. I'm going to open the pouch HTML file from Tuesday. So back on your F drive, we'll open the pouch practice for 11. This is what we need to paste into that brand new screen. There's our form and our div results. That's what's going to be visible to the user. So from your pouch practice file, copy that, don't forget the div. The div is where everything shows. It's easy to forget that, so copy that, and that's what we're pasting into your data role of main. Or role, main, UI, whatever it is, the main area, the article that we just created. Switching back to my index. I copied that and I'm going to paste that in the article. You may have to tab your items a bit. So from the pouch file, I took the form and the div, and now they're in my article. We worked on a separate pouch HTML file to focus on the um, 
on, on, those, on those items to be unencumbered. But the, um, the moment then we integrate this, we can start to use the jQuery mobile stuff, such as better buttons and such. If I run that again, now that we have, for example, input type button, etc. Well, now that we've got it into back into Cordova, we can start to use data roll icons and such. Let me just run this on mine again to confirm that worked. And then we can add data roll icons and transitions and those things. So the speed at which this thing drags, is that a part of the computer or we're accessing a thumb drive or it's just a Cordova um, application that is slow? I mean, what's well, but at what point in the slowness? Copying it out of the folder or doing Cordova run or at what? Well, the very first time you do Cordova run, it's a, it's yeah, the slowest. I, I understand that. And if it's still slow at the moment, it's most likely because of the thumb thumb drive, because we're processing it off of the drive. You know, and all of that's happening on my drive, so it should be. The, the drive. If we're running it on the desktop, it's going to be faster, but I'm not comfortable with that right. because if the power goes out, I lost my work. So if you have USB 3 ports, then yeah. with a USB 3 drive. Yeah, it'll be the, the fastest. I have, a, I have a USB 3 drive, and every time I plug it in, it tells me, you know, this device could run faster. Well, that's nice to know, but this doesn't have USB 3 ports, so then it's not running as fast as it could. So under my classes, I open that up, and then I'm starting to see the the Cordova, uh, the pouch uh, inputs via Cordova styling, looking nice. These buttons here, they were plain old buttons before, now they've got the styling of jQuery Mobile. I want to change those a little bit to, to put them on the same line side by side. I don't want each one to be a block level element to take up its own line. I want them to be in line, a button there, and there, and there. So that will be to set up a grid in jQuery Mobile. We weren't able to do that before, and as I said before, it's not going to look very nice. Once we get it into jQuery Mobile, we can make it look nice. So the way that will work is right there. We've got those input fields, which are buttons, and uh, on the next line, let's create a a grid so that we can put our our buttons into the grid. Div. What's that? What? This is the index file of the Cordova project, yes. This is the div and then class UI-grid-a. We have a div with a class of UI block A, my first cell of the first row, another div UI block B for the second cell of the first row. class UI block C. First cell, second cell, third cell, all in one row. I'm making these so I can move the, the go button into block A, and then the reset button into block B, and then the show button into block C. This will then keep them all lined up in one row instead of them taking up all of the space it'll keep them a bit more in line so btn go input field cut and move it into block a and then btn cancel input cut it and move it into block b and then the third one
So one change I'm doing just for visuals, we saw that it worked on the last few weeks, but for visuals, I've then uh, taken advantage of jQuery Mobile. I'm using the grid to align these buttons nicely. And if you want to, you can do this if you want to. Data icon equals something. You can go look up a nice icon that makes sense for each of those. There's a save button, a cancel button, a show button. So if you go back to jQuery Mobile, you can look up the, the icons and then pick a good icon that corresponds with each button if you want. I'll leave them as is like this, but you might want to do that at some point. Okay, so if I test it, I see my classes, load that up, uh, I'm starting to see those items. I should also add a, a, an inline true to them, it looks like, so that they do stay on one, one row. Oh, actually, one little thing here. Uh, this should have been UI grid B, sorry about that. The grid A is for uh, two columns. Uh, grid B is three columns and C is four, etc. So go back and change that UI grid B. The rest of the functionality is all JavaScript, so if you switch back to your pouch project, just, to, just for my <coughs> curiosity, if we only count the JavaScript code, that's almost 260 lines of code, including comments and that sort of thing. But our pouch HTML file in total was about 280 lines. You saw very little that is HTML. The input fields and the results, div. Everything else is the JavaScript. So what we'll need to do is copy all of this JavaScript code to our JavaScript file, uh, but, not this, but not the script tags. These script tags, we use them in an HTML file. We're going to copy all of the JavaScript, but not the script tags, and we're going to paste that into our index.js file. That's what that's for. Our JavaScript file in the index uh, of for the index is where we're going to have all of this pouch code. So I'm going to copy everything at approximately line 21, so not the script tag, all the way down, not the script tag. I'm going to copy all of those. It's about, uh, what did I say, like 250 lines of code. So I'm going to copy that. In the Cordova project, 
we've been working with the index file, but we've got a JavaScript file for our custom code. Here's all of our custom code. So if you open up the JS folder, in there you'll see the index.js file. And in your index.js file, that's what we'll open up in, in Notepad. And so all of our custom code ultimately needs to be inside of the received event function. We've already got, there's the splash screen, here's the code for loading up websites, here's our get name, remember all of that where we have the user customize it with their, with their name, and that goes on for a while, and then show name function, and then show name was called. So we should then see end of received event, end of the app. Any code that we have that we need to add to our project should be inside of the received event. So before, in my case, it's line 99. Before line 99, paste all of this code we just brought in. We just copied, that is. Pasted it. Yeah, the pouch HTML file. But, uh, not, not the script tags. Since we're putting it directly into a JS file, we should not have HTML in there. So pasted it all in there. I'm going to give myself a note here saying something like what follows is our pouch code. Just something for me to, to see here. Yes. What are we copying or where are we copying? We're copying from the pouch HTML file all of the JavaScript, and then we're pasting it into the JS file. Can you show me the top Show the what? This is our pouch DB code. So after the code that's already there, show name, etc. Then there's our pouch code, all of the 250 lines or whatever that was. We're in a JavaScript file, so we don't want any HTML code in it. Right, so from the HTML file, we took the HTML code and put it into the HTML file. From the script block, we took the JavaScript and put it into the JavaScript file. We don't need that pouch file anymore. You can close it. We were done with the pouch stuff, so I'm going to close it, and we're just going to deal with the index file and the index.js. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to run it in the browser. It should behave as we expect. We still have to polish it up. I'm going to check mine. So I'll run it in the browser. Classes. If I add a class, go getting a result. Not very pretty, but we'll fix that up in jQuery Mobile. Um, I should be able to still click on the pencil. It's filling in those fields. I'm going to make all this look a little nicer. But we should be able to start to see the starting point of our pouch project 
in the Cordova project. Let's pause right there. Anyone need some help with that? We're integrating the two code bases into one. Once we've got it to that point, then it's time for polish.
Try running it again and then I can crouch on the county and ask for the other errors that we're finding. If you see here with saying that it can't find some of your other Yeah, I can see this. Or something like that. That's not going to be the code of the So once we map over, then we can go to the ground. Uh, right. So we can Thank you. 
So that one should fix this problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Even in number one. Not, you're, you're saying they're not even a good idea. Do you want to see it more? 